Uh, can I introduce myself? My name's James Cannon. I'm one of the assistant head teachers. My responsibility at the school is for our curriculum, which includes our key stage three to four uh, options processes, which is what we're going to go through now. As Mr. McGoin said, we have to call them options. I'll refer to them as that um, in old money, but I'm going to talk to you tonight about, about pathways. Um, this presentation, please don't worry about to make notes. Please don't worry about making notes. This will all be available on our website, and I believe we're also being video tonight, so we'll go on YouTube. Um, and so people can see that and, and maybe consult it. Uh, I do apologise that Mike is going to cut it in out and I'll try and, be, uh, I'll try and stay in the, in, the, in the good zones as best I can. So tonight we're going to talk about the rationale behind Pathways. Pathways is a different approach to learning that only, well, other schools do take, we take quite um, an extreme take on it. Uh, I'm going to talk about assessment in 2021 and the actual deal your children will leave your school with and then I'll talk a little bit about the actual selection process. Okay, um, so first up, I'll take you back to when you were in year nine, maybe year eight, and your teachers talked about what subjects you would study in Key Stage 4. I remember with me they said, uh, Jane, paper, uh, we want you to do these subjects, and I'll stick to the boxes and hand it back, and that was it. Um, there was no real thought that went into it, and I did okay, and I'm sure you did too. But actually, research, national research, has proved to us that an options-based model, a free choice-based model, actually leads to ineffective and poor outcomes for young people. Um, I'll talk about what we want for our young people when they're 16, but I'll, well, I'll get to that point. Instead, we run something called Pathways, which is where we guide students towards certain subject areas and towards certain types of qualification that we feel will maximise their potential. This is not based on my hunch, or Mr Shackleton's hunch, or Mr Burgoyne's hunch. This is based on national proven research that is, is proven to lead to the best possible outcomes for children. And so that is the rationale behind why we're doing what we're going to talk about tonight. We have five pathways. Most schools will go with two, an, an academic pathway and a uh, more vocational pathway. But we have five, and I'll explain why we have five. Um, and I'll explain, explain this to the children as well. Within the year group, within year nine, we have children with reading ages that are below their chronological age. Okay, so what that means is their reading ability is not at the level it should be for their age. We also have children with reading ages of 17 year olds. Okay, that is a stark reality and a fact about this year group and our school. So to say that every single person will have the same qualifications is foolish. It, to say that every single person will do the same diet of subjects will be foolish because for some people it will lead to good outcomes and for many people it will lead to poor outcomes. And so as a result we group students together in a broad ability groups. Now one thing I've explained to the students and I've stressed to the students, we don't use vocabulary like the top pathway, the bottom pathway, okay? We just have five pathways. They're not top or bottom. They're just aimed at different types of learner. And there they are on the board. And you'll probably be familiar with one of those, the one your child has been put on and brought the information home. But I can assure you, as a curriculum leader in this school, there is no top or no bottom pathway. They are just different pathways based on need. Um, a little bit there about the idea that we have a, a wide variety of needs. And I've put that point at the bottom. It sounds a bit dramatic, doesn't it? The idea that our students need to be competitive in a global economy. I think the situation this country is in at the moment, just think about what this country may look like in two, three, four years, with what's going to happen in March with Brexit. That will create instability in our employment market, 100%. And so we need to make sure, we need to make sure our children are as competitive as they can be. I hope you've had those conversations with your children that life is tough. Most of you have probably come straight here from work today having done a hard day's work. Life is hard. We've got uh, bills to pay, mortgages to pay, cars to buy, kids to feed, all the rest of it. And trying to do that when you haven't maximised your potential at secondary school makes it even tougher. And that is the message I'm trying to get across to Year 9 at the moment. That actually, this is about improving quality of life. What every single person in this room, teachers, parents, wants for your children is to improve their quality of life continually. Constantly make strides to improve. That's really important to me. And that idea of aspiration underpins every single decision I will make about curriculum at this school. How can we make our children more competitive and improve their quality of life? We are surrounded by some fantastic secondary schools. Bristol, Q3, 
Perry's, Holly Lodge, all high quality institutions that will be doing the same thing. And when our children, you lot, go for these college interviews, apprenticeship interviews, university interviews, or even into employment, you're going to be competing with some very, very able children. And if we don't allow you to leave with the best qualifications, we are doing you a disservice. And I didn't come into this business to do children a disservice. So I hope you understand the rationale behind the reasons we make the decisions we do. I must pay a lot of credit at this point to my colleagues, Miss Pew in English, Miss McCrossan in Maths, Mr Haskell in Science, Mrs Book and Miss Hancock in Humanities and MFL, who have worked tire tirelessly to group students onto these pathways. We don't use terms like, this group of students will be in the Flourish pathway. I've been into their discussions and they literally, quite literally, argue about individual children. Every single one of your children have been discussed at length with these staff, talking about what, how they are doing in English and maths. Are they good at German? Is that a good choice for them? Because languages is important. Are they good at history and geography? How have they done? What is their behaviour and standards like? What is their attitude like? What did they do at Key Stage 2? Well, why is that important? Why do we care about Key Stage 2? Well, that is important because it represents a starting point it shows us a, almost a potential of what you could be. And that's why we think about it. And the amount of work that has gone into this is all about maximising potential. So I would like to, to thank my colleagues. No, not in the room today, but I'm sure you'll see some of them. The work that has gone into this has been really, really high quality. I'm convinced will lead to high quality out. So all students will study. English, Maths and Science. The English is two qualifications, it's a Literature and a Language qualification, they get two GCSEs there. They'll also get a Maths GCSE, and the majority of students will study a Science double. Put a little asterisk there, because some students may study Triple Science, which will obviously be separate sciences, Chemistry, Biology and Physics. Um, in addition to that, they will study four other subjects. Okay? That doesn't mean necessarily they have four choices on their pathway, because as I said to you earlier, some of the pathways have choices made for them to direct them to maximising potential. There are different numbers of choices for different pathways. Okay? That is just a, a, whole, a, cold, a cold hard fact. So you may well be sitting by someone tonight who has got three choices, and you perhaps have only got two. That is the rationale behind Pathways, and I hope I've been nice and clear in my explanation of that. Um, An important point, everything that we do at this school will come down to those core skills of literacy and numeracy, and so therefore that will run through our curriculum, they're given more curriculum time. <laughs> in terms of grades, like myself, you guys will have left school with A star to, uh, to, to, to G. That's changed, we now use numerical grades, one to nine, with nine being the highest and representing almost above an A star, there it is up there. Um, that is not a direct comparison, but it's there or thereabouts. Um, and also, we run vocational qualifications. There is a stigma about vocational qualifications. Like every year I have parents saying, I don't want my child to do a BTEC. I want them to do a GCSE. Well, actually, I'll tell you now, the BTECs are as valuable as the GCSEs. We offer a huge number of, uh, of BTECs at this school, and they are very, very powerful and useful for, for many of our children. Um, the government indicated when this was first released, um, when was it, two years ago, that a five, a grade five, would be considered a good pass, the old grade C. Then they said it was a four and a five, and then they said it was a four. And I read something the other week that said it was a five. So I don't think they're quite sure what they're doing. And, but what we will say is we want as many students to aim for that grade five as possible, the old C grade, if you like. And if people are doing that, they're going to be left. Sorry. Going with high quality outcomes at the end. Um, the government changed their mind regularly on this, as you pro probably guessed, so don't worry too much about what's important is your child aims for the qualifications that they, they, they get. Um, this is the bit, potentially, that I'm going to get a bit jargony in, and I apologise for that in advance, okay? But bear with me, there is someone available to talk to you about this should you need any further questions. But your child is going to be measured in two ways. Their performance will be measured in two ways in this school. One is through their progress, the journey from starting to end point, and another is through their attainment, how well they will do in terms of raw grades. 
We use a system called Progress 8. If you want to look at the performance of a secondary school, you can look at their Progress 8 score. And a Progress 8 score of zero will suggest expected progress has been made. Negative Progress 8 figures suggest below uh, expected progress. And positive project, uh, Progress 8 scores will suggest a positive uh, amount of progress. That is all averaged out and gives a whole school figure. Now we don't share, no, sorry, we don't give the kids that on the, the day when they leave in August 2021. They won't get a certificate with their progress out score on, but we will share it with them repeatedly over the two years to talk about where they may or may not be underperforming or in need of extra support. Okay, you would have heard a lot about these flight paths. Uh, you see them on the reports that your children bring home. That green line there would be an example more than expected progress, and the red line is below expected progress. That black line in the middle is known as uh, flight path, okay, that's where they should be. Now, as they move through year 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, they have to obviously hit a certain number of targets. The reality is that line is not a straight line, it often plateaus in year 7 and 8 and then picks up again as they move into key stage 4. Um, there are various reasons for that, but either way, there is our starting point, okay, Miss Tiara spoke about when you guys came in in year seven, that is where we've got to get to over here, the end of key stage four, that's what we're all working towards. Um, I've also spoke about attainment, this is how the actual grade your children will get, this is a figure called attainment eight, the higher the attainment eight score, the higher, the, the, the higher grade your child will have got. And if I use this as an example on the board for you to see, We've got our English and Maths qualifications up here. Let's say a child got a grade seven there and a grade seven there. Two sciences, remember if I said they'll do double science. If they were to do triple, that triple would drop in there. And then four other subjects, okay? But let's say they got those grades, that would lead to an attainment eight score of 62. That would be an exceptional performance, okay? Um, again, you won't leave with the attainment eight score. We won't give it you with a certificate on, but what we will do is share it with you to say, where are the areas for improvement? What can we do to get better? How can we continue to maximise potential? It's also worth noting, English and maths are double weighted in terms of performance measures, and therefore we spend more curriculum time developing those skills because they're so fundamental to success. You may also have heard us talk about the EBAC or the English Baccalaureate. This is some of the kind of twos and fro's in the national press. If you follow any type of educational press, this is mentioned a lot. This is a suite of qualifications, a group of qualifications that the government have said, this is the best thing for children, everyone needs to be doing this. When this was first talked about, they said by 2022, every single school needs to be doing it. Then it was 95% of kids, then it wasn't really talked about for a bit, now it's 90% of children. My take on that as a curriculum leader, the EBAC is perfect for some of our children. Okay. For roughly about a third of children in this room, the EBAC is a perfect group of qualifications. For some of our children, it would be the worst type of qualifications. You might be a parent sitting there thinking, well, my child is, doesn't excel at history, geography, or languages, but they're better at things like technology and creative arts. And if that is the case, that will probably be reflected in their pathway. Okay? I would happily sit in front of any Ofsted inspector, any, any person from the DFE and say, that EBAC is not right for all of our kids, so not all of them will do it. Some will, some won't, and that's the rationale behind the pathways. So tonight then, please engage with the subject information which is out there, just towards the, as you go out towards the, the Expressive Arts home base. Miss Sembe, who's the Key Stage 3 lead, you might have seen her as you came in. She will talk to you if you've got any questions about this 1 to 9, BTEC GCSEs, how assessment works and progress. And we also representatives from AIM Higher at School to talk to you about potential careers. Just a little caveat on that, every single pathway will allow your child to go on to more or less any career, okay? So you're not going to make choices here that will determine your exact job when you're older, okay? Every single pathway will allow you to live with a broad range of qualifications which gives you what I think is the most important thing in year 11, choice. You want to be able to have a number of choices that you can pick, okay? Is it A-levels? Is it employment? Is it a vocational is it qualification? Is it an apprentice? Whatever that might be, you'll be able to access it if your potential is maximised. So, in terms of the actual selection process, in the morning you will receive a text message on your phone. If you never get any text 
text messages from this school. Um, we probably don't have your number, so I'd urge you with Miss Buckley to, to write it down. If you do get our text messages, then you're fine. And on that text message, there will be a link which you click and it'll take you through to the subject selection process. It's coming to the parent's phone, not to the children's, okay? And that is because I value your input into this process. I want this to be a sitting down, talking at home, what are we putting together, okay? It will open from tomorrow, okay? From tomorrow. The deadline is the 1st of March. But please take a couple of days. It doesn't have to be in straight away. Please take a couple of days to talk with your children about what the best subjects would be. If I could also say, please don't submit multiple <laughs> forms. Some children select 20 forms. Don't need that. Once it's submitted, it's done. If you have any technical problems, please just email that address. That comes straight through to my mobile phone. I teach most of the day, most days. So the chance of being able to answer the phone to you is unlikely. The email is the best way because I can respond to you at any point. I can also send you any of the forms, any of the information you need, all from my phone. So if you do have problems with it, make sure you email that address. That is the best way to get in touch. The message will look a bit like this. Okay. You'll get a link that looks a bit like a Google Word because it's a Google form. Do not click that link. That's the software we use to send the text messages. If you click that, it'll just ask you to log into our system, which you won't be able to do. So it's that link you need. There won't be any login screen at all. And you'll get a form that looks a little bit like that, okay? Really, really easy to fill in. Really straightforward. You put your child's full name. This sounds bizarre, but there are a lot of people that get that wrong. So please, make sure absolutely, I know who we're talking about. And then put your child's form. It will ask you to enter a value into there. So if you don't know your child's form, you're going to have to ask them, okay? Because it won't let you submit the form unless you put that information in. And then you just click through, and those lists will match up what you got in the letter. And that's very important. This really is very, very straightforward. Okay. It avoids all use of paper, which is very good. Um, the forms go live in the morning. I'm planning to send them out between about in the morning and 11. From 11 onwards, I'm teaching all day. So by 11 they probably won't come out until much later on, but I'm hoping they'll all be done by then. The deadline for the submission is the Friday we come back to school, the 1st of March. Okay? My dream in life is on the 1st of March to be able to look and see 310 completed applications. What I tend to see is about 280, and I spend the following week chasing people up. So if you can get that done by the 1st of March, it would make my life easier, and we can get on with timetabling these options. Pathways, sorry. Um, one little caveat as well, at the current time, the DfE, that's the Department for Education, have not accredited every single qualification, and therefore some are subject to change. That's, sorry about this. That sounds a little bit scary, it's not, it happens every year, and generally if a qualification is rejected, they will replace it with a similar type of qualification. But just be aware, we may change some of the qualifications, okay? That just leaves me to thank you for coming tonight. I really appreciate your support. It's so good to see the hall full. I'm not going to take questions from the floor, but if you'd like to speak to my colleagues, you're more than welcome to. Otherwise, please take a look at the subject areas down in the Cray of Arts home base. Thank you very much and have a wonderful afternoon.